Hi, welcome to Wassel Woodworking. Today's video is going to be a very technical one. If you'd rather see a build video, try seeing this one here of a egret that I make out of a four inch piece of PVC. Now that I've warned you, let's go on and talk about limit switches. In an earlier video I made about my CNC machine, link right here, I went over and talked about many of its attributes as well as the limit switches that I was using at the time, which are very simple uh, lever actuated limit switches. Um, since then I've wanted to install a Hall Effect sensor, which is a sensor that doesn't actually have any physical moving parts to it, so there's nothing that you can actually break on it. I have managed to break the lever switches in the past, and uh, that's why I wanted to go to these Hall Effect switches. I also looked at um, light actuated um, limit switches as well, where you'll have an opening and a piece of metal will go in between, and they can tell when it actually uh, trips but I'm not going to get into that, but I will show you how those work. And uh, lastly, just to say that uh, what is the Hall Effect? The Hall Effect was discovered by Edwin Hall in 1879. He was a, a gentleman from the state of Maine. And he discovered that when you run a current through a conductor, if you measure the current perpendicular to the current flow, it'll actually change in the presence of a magnet. Now that that's said, you can go out there and find some great videos. I'm not going to go into any more details, but I will go through and show you each of the three types of limit switches and how I use them. Now you'll see how my existing limit switches work. As it moves over, you can see on the bottom of that little uh, bracket, when it hits that ramp, the lever activates and in what basically shuts it down, you can see the reset button flashing in the lower right hand corner inset. So once I clear that, then I can back it off and move it away. And now for the details of the lever limit switch. So this is a lever switch. This is the type of switch I've been using for my limit switches. And you'll see it has a little lever and a little wheel on here, which allows it to roll um, along a track. And if it hits something, it triggers. So this can be used either way. It has a common lug here, a normally open and normally closed. I'm sure you can't see those little little bit of writing on there. So normally it's in the high uh, and then when it hits the end it goes to low and that was what uh, signals the limit switch. And these work great except for like I said sometimes it'll get damaged or caught up on something and, and break. So that's why I decided to go to the Hall effect sensor. And now for the infrared limit switch operation. So here I have a uh, infrared limit switch comes with a little board and on the board there's a little LED to let you know that it does have power. In this case it uses 5 volts. So I have a um, USB uh, cord here running this uh, board at 5 volts so this is getting the power it needs. And what happens is when you have uh, something that comes along here and blocks this you'll see um, the light comes on and the light on the board dims. So what this means is that um, normally it's it's low and then when something happens it goes to high. So uh, if you had a cut wire you might not know but it could be low as well and then you'd find out that your when your limit switch doesn't work and your system hurts itself that you wish that you had the opposite way. So that is one of the reasons I didn't like this, plus the fact that if this goes in, you'll, you'll see how it slowly starts to lighten up. Its output signal is analog and not digital. Uh, the way it comes on just a little at a time, and I need it to be very on-off. Um, of course, we're talking very small distances, but I figured it would work better. So because of that, I decided I would not use this. And now the Hall Effect Limit Switch. So finally, on the Hall Effect sensor, um, this is the sensor itself. It has green when it's uh, normally operating, and when the south side of a magnet actually approaches the sensor on it, see it turns red. And you'll notice when it turns red that the voltage drops to zero. But when I remove it, the voltage goes right back up to five volts. So this allows the uh, CNC machine to know that something um, that the limit has been exceeded when the voltage drops to zero. It's got a uh, ground, um, it's four connections. It's ground on each of the outsides. Uh, in this case, the 
the black and the yellow and then the red is the voltage to, for this to work and then the green is the outlet um, the signal uh, going away that causes uh, this to work in this case I'm measuring it here just to show um, how it works in summary the green represents 5 volts which is high and the red represents 0 volts which is low and here it is in operation as you can see when the magnet on the end of the 5 16 inch bolt gets close to the Hall effect sensor it turns red goes to 0 volts triggering the system to stop and once I reset it it rolls away turning red back to green so now I've gotten to the point where I've installed all of the Hall effect sensors on the X and Y axis. On the X axis, I've installed one right here, which hopefully you can see, and another one back here. And then I have a uh, 5 16 inch bolt here with a magnet on the end that will actually run across and uh, trip that, and I can adjust that if I need to, uh, like you've seen on that clip before. And I've also put one here on the Y axis. In the Y axis, I chose to actually put this on um, the carriage and then put the magnets mount there. So now you can see as I come by How that works and Of course it works both ways um, So that pretty much concludes this uh, if you do want to get these Hall effect sensors There's a guy named Kevin Patterson on YouTube and I went to his site and actually purchased them, so I'll include the links at the, on the credits uh, for this. He's got a couple great YouTube videos, and I really like Kevin's uh, product, and it works well. Um, so that pretty much concludes this video. Hey, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe now. Uh, it really helped me out. I'm trying to grow my uh, subs number of subscribers. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Put your comments below. Let me know what you think. If you've got any questions about this, I'd be happy to answer how I uh, set all these up and uh, give you some more details if you need it. Anyway, I'll see you next time on Wassail Woodworking. Thanks for watching.